Okay, hey you guys, I'm back. So I am gonna cover with you guys um, the AANP um, board, which is, um, so the way I'm gonna shape this video for you guys is I'm gonna tell you what the test is, um, how many questions, time, how, uh, and, and what topics I saw on this test and what. So let's see here, let me open up my phone that has my review for you. Okay, so. The AANP, and I'm also using Leak to give me the references too. Um, this is the third edition of Leak. So the uh, AANPC board, um, and they are discussing the released 2018 board. I know that there was right, a so the AANP Nurse Practitioner Board or FNP exam is a total of 150 questions. Only a th 135 of them are graded. Okay, there are 15 questions that are not graded. Those are the tester questions that they put in to see how students are answering them, whether they're too easy or they're too hard, or, you know, it's, it's their algorithm, essentially. This is what they're figuring out how to do. Okay, so the exam is on a computer, so you need to have basic computer knowledge to do it. It is also very archaic. The total amount of time in the exam is three hours. The AANC exam, I believe, gives you four hours. So, um, yes, that being said, moving to the next thing here. So when you get in there, it'll sh it'll ask you, it'll give you like a quick little tutorial on how to use this program that they have you using. Um, AANP is considered the more clinical exam than the AANC or ANCC. Ugh, I'm going to screw that up. ANCC is more for like... It has more theory, more science questions, um, and when I mean science questions, I mean like research questions and, and things like that. I had one research question on the uh, board I took, um, and it was just basically like which one of these researches was better. My like. review is here. So um, this is, although here's one point that's different from uh, the NCLEX, if you guys recall the NCLEX. The, the NCLEX was an algorithm-based exam. So that meant that the computer was gauging how well you were doing and would give you questions based on difficulty, depending on how well or how not well you were doing. This test is not like that. It has formats, as in like, you know, form A, form B, form C, form 100, and you will get one of those tests generated. So you don't have any algorithms or no computers behind the scenes trying to figure out which question is easier or harder. But instead of that, they made the board specifically, or this type of test, specifically in a certain order. And if you have tested enough, you will notice it, as in testing yourself. You'll notice the order. The questions will start out difficult. Then they get medium. Then at the end, they get easy. And they speckle in easy, and they speckle in medium, and they speckle in hard. But Generally, they've got a nice bell curve kind of going on, okay? So imagine that this is all done to psych you out. So, of course, you're going to put some hard freaking questions in that first group there because you want the student to unfortunately kind of feel like they're not going to do very well. You're going to feel very exasperated and you're going to waste time. The whole test, you're not just playing with questions, you're playing with an entire like a scheme almost and you are trying to win a game and you need to be able to be in control of yourself in control of your actions and your thoughts in specific you need to be able to break down this information quickly and move along okay you're only doing this once all right so keeping pace is essential that is one of the things that i had written here on my on my phone this is my test review i write one every time Okay, so the flow of the, of the exam was hard to easy. Keeping pace was essential. The first few questions are meant to distract you and pummel your confidence. My plan was read, attempt the best answer, mark it, and move on. So, like I mentioned, get used to using that marking um, tab that they have. I don't know how else to say this. Do not go in there and mark all of them. What you need to think about is you're going to read that question through. You're going to do your best to figure it out you're gonna then narrow it down to two answers. That's generally what a lot of people can do. And on this test, I saw it happen multiple times over. I'm guessing between two questions. Ooh, I got a text message. 
Flagging. I flagged exactly 19 questions. Okay, out of 150, I flagged 19 of them. Method. Some I simply flagged because I wanted to double check my answer after. Sometimes you remember things as you go along in the exam and taking a second look can steer you clear of a missed answer. That is a, that is a very important study method that a lot of people don't tell their students about is you can pick up information, accurate information from the test. So when you are taking the test, you can then keep that in the back of your mind or write a note down or something. You can use that because if you marked your questions, you can go back to them. Some of the questions you're going to have to kind of sit there and say, I got to trust my gut and I got to move on because I can't flag all of them. Questions that I found to be a little tricky or that I knew I was going to need more time to really dissect. Those were the questions that I started flagging. All right. And a lot of those 19 questions were not questions I didn't know how to answer. They were questions that I simply just wanted to double check because I knew it, but I didn't want to be jumping the gun or chomping at the bit. Okay. Um, sometimes you remember things as you go along in the exam, you should be marking on an, an, an as needed basis. I would also not flag more than 25 questions period. That's specific. Do not mark more than 25 questions because think about it. The fastest person to take this exam can probably finish it in about two hours and a half. That's the fastest because of think about how many questions there are. Um, unless somebody is just a speeding bullet, you know, which is unusual, but there are people who can do it and whoever you are, you're amazing. So, but most of us are going to be sitting at a two and a half hour, hour mark. And if that's, that is, if you're like on it, like on it. So if you start marking more than 25 questions, you will not have enough time to go back and look. So keep that number limited to under 25 because you need 25 minutes to cover each one of those questions. Even if you were to just decide in 30 seconds, it's still 30 seconds that you didn't have before. So try to keep that number limited. If you can keep it to 20 or less, even better, you'll be fine. You'll have plenty of time to go back and look. The, that is enough, enough time to have multiple difficult questions come up that you're just not sure of or that you know you need that time to go back and look at. So use it for those types of questions because there are questions like that on the exam. They want you to take up that time. So plan them out accordingly. Okay, next thing. Um, if no one has said it before, I will. Trust your gut. If you have been studying the materials recommended not just by me, but by other peers and reviews, you will be able to pick out the right answers most of the time, okay? It should take you 30 seconds to have the question read and the options presented to you. You should have the other 30 seconds to review the basic ones. There are longer questions that will require more than one minute apiece. Those are the ones that you should be flagging. There are about a handful of those and some are plain as day while others will require you some serious thinking. It's true. I had some really long questions and you were like, oh my gosh, that's it? Really? That was what you were asking me? Ugh. And then other times you're like, oh shoot. All right. Here is where I get down to my breakdown of the types of questions I saw. I saw mainly geriatric and pediatric patients centered in the stems of the questions. Although... The answers were not necessarily geared to be either of those groups. For example, I had a ton of dermatology focused questions, but it would feature an adult or a ped and what medication or what the disease was. So yeah, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that it was a child or an adult. We would still treat them the same way for this particular question or questions. It was just the fact that I just saw peds and, and a geriatric presented the most for all like across the board they would use an adult or peed. You had maybe a speckle of pregnant women and a speckle of teenagers, um, but peds and geriatrics, they went to the extremes on my test. Um, I will list the topics and areas and tidbits in random order that I saw. So this is essentially the areas and the topics that I saw were presented on my exam, this is not the same for everybody. Remember, I mentioned there are multiple formats for this exam. So this is what I saw. <clears throat> I'm going to cover them. They're random, okay? No order, no idea. All right. 
basal cell carcinoma, iron deficiency anemia, the anemias, thalassemia. I had one thalassemia question. Um, impetigo, hand, foot, and mouth disease, vaccinations. They didn't ask me anything about what specific vaccine I needed to give a kid. They asked me things like, um, which of these vaccinations is dangerous for a pregnant woman? Like, which one should you just not give, you know? And like, you know, what part of it? So, um, so for example, it was a, I think it was the MMR that came up for pregnant women. Like, hey, you, you don't get one of those right now. You wait until you're not pregnant anymore. Okay. Pregnancy and vaccines, as well as the live attenuated, for example, and specific viruses that I saw come up are Coxsackie virus, the varicella, mono, strep, strep, and strep. I saw a lot of strep, a lot of strep, like so much strep. It was so freaking strepping. There was, I know that doesn't make sense. <laughs> All right, but I saw a ton of strep and not just strep that is associated with your throat. You know, I saw a strep that was associated with pneumonia. I had all different kinds of strep. I had a few staph infections, you know, skin stuff, but strep came up quite a bit. Uh, a lot of my antibiotic questions came up with strep. A lot of my um, treatments and diseases came up with strep. So get ready for that. Uh, okay, okay. Know the differences when the bacteria is attacking what organ or what area of the body and know how to treat that. So know your treatments for GI problems, know your treatments for U uh, URIs, uh, know your treatments for um, ortho. Ortho came up a, quite a bit. <clears throat> Alrighty. Staph, I already said staph. MRSA, there was one MRSA question. Medication safety in the elderly. Blood pressure medications, statins, and insulin, all three of those came up multiple times. I saw zero questions on the BP guidelines. So the American Cardiac Association and the JNC8, I didn't see anything on them aside from questions that discuss the medications. So literally, like, I think I had one question on... Um, Systolic, hyper, systolic hypertension, you know, for like an old person, like what drug of choice would you give for that Ugh, calcium channel blocker? That, that is what I saw. Um, JNC specific or ACA specific, nothing, nothing specific. Okay, <laughs> next. I saw SSRI question. I saw one question on the levels of evidence, one question on Weber, on Weber, no Renee, no Ryan or Renee or however you guys want to say it. Antibiotics and what to give if you have an allergy to penicillin. That came up a lot, especially with peds. Penicillin and peds and parents. P P P. No, really nothing on parents, but penicillin and peds. Those that I had multiple questions on, okay, this child had this, they got better, they got worse, what would you give now? What would you do? Would you wait? Would you not wait? That kind of stuff. Um, antibiotics in non-pregnancy, although a minor who is sexually active. That was the most terrifying question I took home from that test. 14-year-old female who is sexually active. I'm like, what the crap are you talking about? What? What? <laughs> No, you're a baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> AFib. I had three or four questions on AFib. Like they asked you what was the most common type of arrhythmia that you would see? What was a safe medication to give with AFib? What is not a safe medication to give with AFib, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, heart murmurs. I had two questions on heart murmurs. Grapefruit and statins. I had a question on that. Um, cranial nerves. I had exactly one question and it was like super obvious. Um, diabetes, I had two questions. One was on insulin. The other was on metformin. And I did have one semi-OG effect. Um, heart failure, I had two to three questions and what to take and what not to take for heart failure. I had calcium channel blockers and specific asked. I had dementia, 
the question was pretty much like what was the second most common type of dementia and if you read your leak book i'm not joking the answer is on the leak book is in here i mean all right i had one hepatitis question one question on hep b ace inhibitor two to three questions on specifically ace inhibitors and then I had an unusual question, and I have a suspicious feeling it was a test question, like a tester question. It talked about like somatic versus not somatic. It was worded a bit. It was the one that really stood out to me because it, I was just completely stumped. I had not seen any of that type of language brought up at all. Those were the um, topics and areas that I saw. S save this video, subscribe below. I will go ahead and try to do more videos about like topics like this. I hope it helps you guys. And I'm also going to put up another video about the Tanner stages. So stay tuned, you guys. And thank you for following me. So that's me, Millennial MP. I will catch you guys later. Take care.